To reopen or not to reopen? That is the question that pundits all over the country are turning into Jay-Z Shakespeare references this morning, as the question at the tip of everybody's mind is, where do we go from here? Now that things have kind of settled in, I, I, I hate to even say that, have they, have they settled in? Certainly not in terms of the forced unemployment crisis that we're experiencing here in the United States. As we brought you the numbers last week, unemployment truly staggering. Is it because of the coronavirus? No, it is because of the forced shutdown. Let's be honest here. It is so critical that we use honest language when talking about these big issues so easily confused and distorted and manipulated by those who would confuse and distort and manipulate in order to exploit us as we have seen happening in recent months in new and unprecedented ways on a global scale. It is quite a disturbing world that we have entered into. We cannot even ask the right questions. To reopen or not to reopen, to restart or to restop. And now we see the headlines of fear-mongering that I predicted months ago. Another time I have to say, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. Yes, this is what we face today. The world is asking the question to reopen or not to reopen. The question they should be asking is, should we have ever stopped in the first place? Should we have ever allowed ourselves to be cowed by this fear? And the reason it is so important to be asking the right questions is that if you never ask the right questions, you'll never get the right answers. Now, yes, clearly the position now is reopen, reopen, reopen. This is absolute insanity to be continuing the shutdowns that we have today while we see the numbers continuously revise down and down and down in perspective. Oh yes, a thousand people die a day from this and that and the other and Corona is just one more thing. And I'd like to point out like, yes, <laughs> uh, I've already had a few months of I told you so's here. On March 1st, Ron Paul wrote the column, the coronavirus hoax. I did a podcast of the same name a month earlier. The questions we need to be asking are not being asked by the mainstream right now. Of course, there is an immediate question, should we reopen or not? But if you were to ask the right question, should we have ever closed anything down in the first place? You would have an easy answer to this question. We need to be looking at who to trust. Who do we listen to? Who's coming to us with good intentions? With this old fashioned notion of journalistic integrity, which is not to say that I, I have no bias, but that I am open about them in a world dominated by the violence and coercion and control of government. I am biased unabashedly towards peace and nonviolence, to love, to harmony, to freedom. So when I see people lying on behalf of those contrary values, you're damn right, I am going to call them out on it. The big story today from the Associated Press, restart or restop countries reopen amid second wave fears by Lori Hinnon and Nick Perry. And, and I, I'm looking at this photograph here with these X's. I, I, I'm reminded of so many scary icons, plastic spacing barriers and millions of masks appeared on the streets of Europe's newly reopened cities Monday as France and Belgium emerged from lockdowns, the Netherlands sent children back to school, and Spain let people eat outdoors. Oh my gosh, you I, I just the let you were were people really banned from eating outdoors, or was it just in restaurants? Again, a bit of the dystopia that we are experienced is exaggerated because the primary lens through which we are able to see the rest of the world still is through the mainstream media. The distortion in the language and the headlines and the presumptions needs to be combated. If you're not going to be watching Adam versus the man five days a week, you at least had better be reading between the headlines. All face the delicate balance of trying to restart battered economies without causing a second wave of coronavirus infections. I have to translate this 
from statist speak, from, from the language of authority and violence to a language of peace and love. But the, the France and Belgium emerged from lockdowns. Spain let people eat outdoors. They are deliberately confusing the country with its government. Governments are not the same as the country. In America, it is very easy to point out. We are clearly too good for this government. And if I am not a grammar Nazi. I am not. If you can clearly communicate what you are trying to communicate, I am not going to split hairs. But when you miscommunicate what you intend to in a way that plays into the language of authority and violence and control, oh, I am going to point it out every time. And this is, I have to admit, at age 38, a relatively new thing for me, that it was a discipline I had to develop to not say, we did this. We, we won World War II. We declared our independence. We, we, we beat the Nazis. We ended slavery. No, no, no. But it applies to the bad things. And I love uh, Doug Stanhope's comedic deconstruction of this kind of nationalism, patriotism, as he refers to it, making you hate people you've never met and take credit for things you never did. He uses World War II as an example. Remember when we defeated the Nazis, Doug? No, Bill, I, I, I don't. I remember you and me got wasted and watched monster truck reruns. I, I don't think we had anything to do with the invasion of Normandy. Yeah, I'm totally butchering his bit, but I think you get the point. With, with all due respect to my, my friend and, and someone, I'm a big fan of Doug Stanhope here. So the question, to the, should we open or not? Yes. Of course. Should we have ever shut down in the first place? Of course not. And when you answer that question, it leads you to the next good one. Well, why did this happen? Why, did, why, in the face of a relatively minor health crisis, did we allow governments to impose a forced unemployment crisis? because we trusted the wrong authorities, because we live in a world where they are the ones asking the questions and forcing their wrong answers on us. I hope we can learn the lesson from it. I know I've learned a lot of lessons. I only hope to share them now with Adam versus the man. I hope that you will join me in this effort and further the conversation. As I've said, I'm excited that those of us who are skeptics of authority are in a, new, in a unique and new way forced to have conversations with people who are not. In the olden days, when government comes down with their authority, their mandate, and their control of the broadcast system, what, what do we get to question them? The one crazy guy in the corner going, you know, this doesn't quite add up. Well, now, at least those of us who might have been pushed to the side in the past have a role in the conversation. We have the evidence to back up this position to say, look, no, the lesson of this is not just that we should reopen or that we never should have closed in the first place, but that never again should we allow society to be in a position to be so brutally victimized by our government.